Faithfulness is your calling. You have asked to speak more on Tantra. What is this inner woman and inner man? The Sutra of Nanak helps to understand this Tantra understanding better. Each individual has undeveloped consciousness. It is in the form of subconscious and unconscious. These carry the entire pattern of your group. Your unconscious and subconscious is referred to as Virji. Tantra revolves around a communion between Virgin and an advanced consciousness. According to Hindus, the advanced consciousness represents the Purush element and the undevelopment consciousness represents the Prakriti. Purush and Prakriti, these are the two elements. And this is what is what represents the Shiva symbol of Shivlingam. Prakriti means the humus, your body, and the body has its systems. The systems are guided by your unconscious and subconscious. The unconscious and subconscious works through organs of perception and organs of action. Each time when the wheel revolves, your unconsciousness comes onto the surface. This is overching. Each time it happens in a new way. When the light comes in, Purush means the male element which is symbolized as light. When light falls on your subconscious and unconscious, it illumines these in the form of thoughts. Thoughts are illumined. When your thoughts are illumined, then your actions are guided by you. And when the organs of perception bring the information, they will bring the information in the light of the change that has taken place with the light illumining your thought process, bringing the light into the dark cave of your mind which has dominant factor of subconscious and unconscious. Then your illumined thoughts start interacting with the information that comes in and the information that goes out. When there is, you can put it this way, when there are too many negativities, everything that you see gets muddled in that because the pot is dirty. In a dirty pot, whatever you will put, even if you put the crystal water, the sparkling water, it will get muddled because the pot is dirty. It is the subconscious and unconscious that makes the pot dirty and your thought process becomes muddled. But as I mentioned, the process of conserving the solar energy. The solar panels are placed in a particular way on the roof. The sunlight falls. The inner mechanism of the solar panels transforms the light of the sun in the form of an energy. Energy is lit. You can use it in any form that you wish. Meditation or witnessing or awareness is that solar panel when the light falls because every moment light is still the only thing is this you have forgotten and forgetfulness has become your way it is your witnessing it is your awareness will act as the filters to transform that light into an energy through transforming the thoughts. Awareness or witnessing becomes the way and thought process becomes the solar panel or the spiritual panels. Then the energy is stored. And when this energy begins to establish itself, the storehouse, then whatever information comes to you, through the organs of perception, it is perceived in the light of that energy which has become part of you. 
When I speak to you or through the meditation sessions, it is the energy being transformed into the words. Like just as a simultaneous process is happening, I am speaking to you, the words are forming. This is analog, but the analog cannot move far. The device that I am using of the Skype transforms this analog into digital and the digital energy, the words in the form of the digital reaches your system and your system retransforms the digital into analog and you hear the analog because we are receptive to the analog, digital we cannot. Everything works on a digital system. When you look at the life streaming, sometimes before the word appears, there is numbers flashing. The entire digital system works on two digits, zero and one, computer device and everything. So too, when message, the energy field reaches you in the form of words, it transforms, it brings light into you, into your being, into your dark fields. If you have constantly been hearing my words, then your way of understanding, the way of reaction, the way of response will change. I had mentioned this again and again. Something or the other that I speak on a particular day, may appeal to you. You will remember that. You will not forget that at all. And when you remember this and a particular situation comes, your response happens in the light of that words. The human body works through organs of perception and organs of action. This is the outcome of subconscious and unconscious this is virgin. This is your inner woman. And the light that you allow to come into you, the male element, light is masculine element. It illumines everything that is passive within you. Your thoughts have been passive. They were lying down in. The moment light comes, this gets illumined. Light has the capacity to actually, to resurrect all that has been dormant in you. So your, because of your subconscious and unconscious, your organs of perception and actions are moving in a particular way that is not in harmony with all that has to happen. You go to see a movie, there you get attached to the sea, you forget that this is simply an acting. You cry, you laugh, feel sad and undergo many emotional disturbances. If the scene is tragedy, you will find sadness surrounding you. And if the film has too much excitement, you are very attentive. In the process of attachment, you forget that the scene is empty. This is the game of sun and shadow. So your inner man is your layers of subconscious and unconscious which you are born with and through these you interact into the world of objects and beings and whatever information you bring, whatever state is there that of darkness, everything happens according to that condition. If the meditation has begun and has begun to attain fruition. Flowers have started blossoming. That means the light that is coming in is being stored and it is, when it is stored and it is needed, it illumines your organs of perception and organs of action. A relationship begins between the two. This relationship that happens between the light that is transformed into the energy and the undeveloped thoughts, 
you have always thought to look at the things in a particular way and then react to these. You have not heard the word response. The moment that energy activates the organs of perception, the information is perceived in a different way, then instead of reaction, response happens. Now you are aware of your mistakes or shortcomings. In the process, the seer disappears and you have entered the realm of the seer. Slowly and slowly you are in illusion and this becomes your habit. The process continues. When there is darkness, absence of light, you dream and the dream appears to you to be true. This understanding deepens in you and whatever appears to you to be, appears to you, appears to be true. So when the information comes through the organs of perception, you find it correct and you react to this immediately. When you wake up from this slumber, how can you wake up when there is light? Sun has started appearing on the horizon. It is dawn. And in case of inner development, it is dawn of consciousness. Consciousness has risen to the horizon, its rays of light is falling, being conserved in the form of energy and illumines the inner man. The outer is symbolic, the inner is more important and the moment you try to understand this and begin to interact through this, you introspect a particular circumstance and situation before you start and letting the organs of action go through. As soon as somebody says something, you immediately reply it as far as your understanding goes. Then you repent. The person says that I did not mean and you repent. But before that happens, Allow the process of illumination to happen. Thoughts are illumined and when illumined thoughts interact with organs of, with objects and beings in the light of, through the organs of perception and action, then there is a totally a different kind of life that you undergo. The life that has now taken place. This is Tantra understanding. Shiva, in the process of explaining this Tantra understanding, focused on breathing because breathing helps a lot. When a particular thought, particular perception is entering you, and if you had already practiced the breathing patterns, so the first sutra, when Devi inquires, what is thy reality? What is this wonderful universe? And many questions like these, one after the other, she asks. In response to each question, Shiva gives a meditation technique. The first technique says that when the air touches the nostrils, it, has, it is still outside, it has not started movement within. Be aware of this. This is the first part. How this can be translated? You are interacting into the world of objects and beings. Organs of perception is active. Before they go out to that particular object, you become aware. I decided to go to an electronic store because my interest is in electronic items. Maybe cell phones. Maybe devices like these. Before I go, in seeing these is no problem. But I become aware, do I need these things? The existing system that I have is good enough and, continue, and continues to work efficiently. With this awareness when I go, the organs of perception will not bring any kind of haphazard information and I have to fulfill it. When Shiva says that be aware when the 
air that is outside and touches your nostrils before it begins its downward movement be away. The process of the movement of the air has not begun. The air means something is coming into you. It can be in the form of information. It can be in the form of air. When air comes in, it brings life into you. And when the information about a particular project, you allow, particular product you allow it to come, it is in a way a new life is entering into you. You may feel its necessity. Your son or daughter may say that is very important. I must get this item. Because she does not have to look at the resources. Resources you as a parent has to look into. When you look into those kind of objects, you are already have the awareness. Yes, it is good. But I do not need it right now. And at the same time, I cannot afford it. Witnessing has come in and witnessing has allowed you to respond in a particular way. So when the information is coming into you through the organs of perception and action, be aware. But for this he gave the technique. Directly you cannot go onto the field without undergoing a training to start opening a radiator in the car or carburetor in the car and trying to fix it. You will create a mess. So he gives a technique, this came to be known as the whole treatise came to be known as Vidyan Bhairav Tantra. You start practicing the breathing. When the breathing touches the nostrils, then it begins its downward movement. It seems very tedious in the beginning. The moment you start a little effort, you will find it becomes easy. But the moment the breathing touches the nostril. It is a very precise moment. It is like you take a sip of the tea. The sip of the tea takes a few seconds or moments, but its effect lingers. After that, you can write pages after pages on the experience of sipping a cup of tea. To sip a cup of tea, to take a first sip, there is a process. I am starting from the time the tea is served to you. You hold the handle of the cup, lift the cup. Slowly and slowly the cup is raising. You are looking at it in slow motion. The sipping of the, the first sip. Then it, the cup, its outer surface touches your lips. You tea because tea is hot. You cannot take a big sip. You take a very infinitesimal sip. It gives a little taste. You can keep the cup in your hand or put it down. But taking the sip has finished in a few seconds. But its effect lingers and explanation may take a longer time. So when Shiva says that be aware of the air that it touches the nostril, it is a precise moment. A very infinitesimal moment. You can miss it very easily. But with the example of taking the first sip of the tea from the cup can help you. When you become aware that the air is touching the nostril, at that time your mind cannot waver or think of anything else. Because you have to feel the, the air touching your nostrils. It is a very delicate moment. You can miss it. It is a precise moment. If you are not aware, you are going to miss it. That's why the techniques of Vijan Bhairav Tantra are considered to be tedious. Then the breathing begins its downward movement. Slowly and slowly, it is going downwards. It does not take long to reach the solar plexus any time. Comes in and before a thought comes, it is already there. The movement is fast, but the speed of your 
mind, if state of your witnessing is too slow to witness, you begin to move with the breath as it is mo moving after touching the nostril through the passage of the nostril and through the windpipe, it reaches to the solar plexus. You can do one simple exercise. Just sit down and do the breath over. You know the science of ornithology. People who are bird watchers, they have nothing to do. The birds will have their movement. They come at their own will. They go at their own pleasure. But when they are in the flight within your sight, it fills you with a joy. So all you can do a particular morning or the day that you decide, you go by the place where you can sit down come and be comfortable. Now you are waiting for the movement, for the incoming of the birds. You are watching. This whole process is known as the science of ornithology. You, are, have, you have nothing to do with the breath touching the nostril. It is a natural process. Just as when one bird begins to come, or one flower begins to blossom, the season of the spring has come. After one, the next flower blossoms and they look the whole season. The whole process of blossoming has begun. One bird comes, followed by the next, and the whole flock of birds comes. The air, the first speck of the air touches the nostrils, you are aware. And then what will happen? It is, you are watching it in a framed window. The screen in front of you is very small. From one side the picture comes in and from the other side they disappear. The birth and the dissolution is happening simultaneously. A breath comes in, you become aware of it as it touches the nostrils. Then along with that you are moving as the breath moves within, you are moving within, you are coming. The breath is descending downwards to reach to the solar plexus. You are moving with it. You are becoming aware. And in that very happening, you will become so relaxed. So relaxed that there is no haphazardness. Instead, there is utter relaxation. Now, as I repeat, you observe and go with me. You are sitting in a comfortable position. There is no discomfort of any kind. The air is now going to touch your nostrils. Feel the freshness, the cool breeze touching your nostrils. It touches for a moment. The touch is very delicate. And if you are not aware, if you are living by habit, you will not feel its delicate touch. It has touched you. Started the downward move. As slowly and slowly the air is moving with you, you are moving with it. There is no thoughts. Just you are moving with the air. Air is the vehicle. Riding the vehicle, you are moving with it. Go to the inner depths. And the moment it reaches the solar plexus, become the witness, become aware of it once again. Because beyond this, there is no journey. The air only goes up to that point solar plexus. The centers below that, it does not go. They remain in darkness, continue to send their effects. You. It has reached the solar plexus, it has touched, you become aware, pause for a moment. And then it is now, air is going to turn. Because the vehicle has reached the dead end. From there it has to take a U-turn. And when it takes the U-turn, its journey upward will begin. So as it is taking you turn, you become aware. You are moving in a slow motion as the vehicle moves. You have 
seen when around it round about you have reached to the dead end and from there in a particular settlement area you are not aware of your destination you forgot and you entered into a lane which is a dead end you cannot in that lane which is residential you have to go at lowest speed and then when you reach the roundabout and you have to take 180 360 degree turn you have to control your speed the lowest speed and you are turning the same thing is happening the brake has reached the dead end it has to take a u turn so it will take a u turn in a very slow motion along with that you are also poor you your body is still but your consciousness is moving consciousness is moving when i said you move within with that your consciousness is moving your attention is moving your awareness is moving with the aim it reaches the solar plexus means it has touched the solar plexus when you give a soft touch to a male or a female or all of a sudden somebody gives you a tender touch kind of lightning runs through your veins current like a current the electric energy the energy moves within you so you are moving in a slow motion very gently first the turn this is a next pause pause and be aware of it that you have consciousness is turned up now it's upward movement begins when it's upward movement begins again it reaches the nostrils and goes on in the process it has refreshed your entire innerness that passive and when it has reached the solar plexus the lower emotions through which you continue to operate in the world of objects and beings is refreshed is renewed now when the information will come to you through these organs of perception it will be in a different kind of freshness different kind of oneness this is your first sense the when the air reach the freshness of the air has created a pole created a junction created a station within and it is that which receives the information perceived first that it comes to you and when it reaches the outer center which is the nostrils it is outside you so the thoughts that were within you as virgin untouched they have been touched by the consciousness and it begins to move up consciousness has illumined that place through which the perception is coming to you when it reaches the other center from there the reaction begins and it diffuses into the outer world of objects and beings as a response as a reaction through this process of breathing and relating it to the process of perception and action you are experimenting with this first technique of meditation the breath touching the nostrils it creates a very fine sensation and as it happens the breath begins its downward movement so within you slowly and slowly it is descending and reaching the solar plexus there it creates its mark just like in a relay race person reaches to the destination where he has to reach hands over the baton to the other the sprinter and stays there so the breath has reached touch the center and begins its upward move first it turns and begins upward move and it is on the ascent this ascent and descent goes together as one complete process but it has various stations various stages through which it goes through this is the first technique of vidyan bhairavam 
you can do this by breath watching as I mentioned like an ornithologist of the breath you are watching the, the movement of the breath as it is coming in and with the breath comes the energy particles which William Reich calls it or bone or pranavayu or you can say this is the light the light that is coming into you from an unknown source it has along with the energy particles energy particles is nothing else but that light if you are not aware of this then the entire process of breathing is useless it becomes a mechanical and in that state whatever happens and you become aware you will realize that you had made a mistake and this process of mistake is now discontinued just as after dreaming every morning you find the dream to be false but you never realize that the soul process has to stop the moment you realize this this process stops and that which you see you consider that to be true this is your habit this is a process in tantra it says the dream state continues until you become aware of its falsehood in the dream until then you will not consider the world of duality as false right now as you are you can only consider this world of duality to be true tantra has developed certain subtleties you can take an experiment as regards the dream is concerned whenever dream is happening you will raise your hand or something else like this each night before going to sleep remember this then one day you will find this echo deep within even in the dream sometimes when i meet people along the road and they see me immediately they remember a word or a sentence that i have spoken in any part of the program or they have read it or they have heard it this is the remembrance and the day but you have not allowed it allowed it to enter your subconscious and unconscious layers those is still remains virgin the moment you allow it to remain enter into that then after a period of 3 to 4 months one day you will find as soon as you start dreaming a remembrance surfaces and you come to realize that you are dreaming and that very moment the dream disappears the process of awakening has begun it has to emerge from the dreams then one day you will realize that the world of reality is nothing else but dream itself gurjeev used to say the day your consciousness becomes double arrow that day you will attain his effort was whenever you are seeing someone never forget the seer be aware of both the seen and the seer simultaneously with this transcendence happens this is born the purpose of tantra technique is over purpose of all this is to bring witness unity as soon as witnessing happens you have attained the trinity in the trinity two are visible and the third remains invisible as this trinity intensifies the two disappear in oneness at this confluence all three disappear in this is the reason that hindus call that confluence in kashi confluence in priya as the key this is a, a unique confluence two streams of ganges and the yamuna remain visible and the third saraswati is invisible this is not only significant instead symbolic as well the stream of saraswati the embodiment of wisdom em- embodiment of awakening refers to missing mystical link of consciousness and what is consciousness 
the light transformed into the energy and conserved within. Dhyan or awareness alone can bring that missing link into you. Meditation or various techniques of meditation that you undertake becomes like a solar panel device. A device to transform the light when it is descending from an unknown and unknowable source into you. It is processed and transformed into energy. This energy illumines your entire process of interaction into the objects and beings and know this as consciousness. It is through consciousness that you interact in the world of objects and beings. The energy comes into you and immediately it is transformed into you, depending on what it is needed. When your air conditioner is needed, the energy transforms itself to give you cool breeze. In process of interacting in the world of objects and beings, you need energy transformed as consciousness. So too. Now when your attention goes to some, the subject and the object remain visible. That which happens between the two becomes invisible. This is the invisible current that Hindus speak of Saraswati. At a time it was visible, when man was aware. Now with the passage of time that awareness has, process of awakening has awakened, it is no more there. That link is missing. So when it is said that it is a pilgrimage of Hindus, it is simply for me a symbol. And the symbol is the two remains visible, the subject and the object. One is subject, the other is object. So the stream of Ganges and the stream of Yamuna, the Blue River, represents the object and the subject and how process that happens between the two is perception and action. This requires awareness, this is the missing link. And through the process of meditation a state comes when the three merge into one another. And when this merge into one another, the illusion disappears. You see everything in its true light. This is known as illusion or maya, but it is created for the process of transformation. This symbol of Prayagraj, the king, the confluence, the Sangam, where the three streams merge into one another, the true are visible, the third one is invisible, is important, it is symbolic. Out of this three are born and this is the concept of incarnation, is that which comes into existence out of its free will as manifestation, there are three aspects, Nanak says. One that creates, one that preserves, and one that, that destroys or dissolves. This confluence is the process of or tantra understanding.